Now then, people, and welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. I hope you are all doing well. Please do smash a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, get your comments in, and of course, hit that notification bell. No presser today, tomorrow afternoon, and I will be out for that, so I will be pre-recording a Leeds versus Blackburn preview in its place. But what I wanted to do today was to break down the accounts that were released by Leeds United yesterday. I can't lie to you, it's took me 24 hours to... Uh, sample them, take them in, and try and uh, understand it myself. I mean, you know, it, finance and being a finance expert ain't easy, and I'm not that. You know, I tried to get Kieran Maguire on, but as you can imagine, he's a well sought after man. And it turns out Joe Donahue at the YEP and other reporters across the Leeds United sphere have managed to get five minutes with him. And um, big shout out Joe Donahue and the YEP. The link to their article will be in the description to this video. But what it's done is sort of broke it down and put it into layman's terms for someone like me. So what I'm going to do is uh, try my best to uh, explain that for those that maybe don't have a, have X or, you know, want to hear it from, from me. So, um... Leeds United yesterday released their 22-23 financial accounts. Of course, this caused a lot of fanfare, a lot of worry. Naturally, it does, right? Especially with PSR and everything straight away. We're like, what does it mean? Are we going to be getting a points deduction? Ah, that was my initial reaction. Um, but to be honest, uh, the club reported a modest 33.7 million loss for the year. When you compare that you know, with some of the other clubs that have received such big losses as we've seen uh, with the likes of Everton and uh, not least Leicester who are in our division who were close to 90 million. For Leeds just to post a loss of 33.7 million, it ain't that bad. Um, now, of course, what it does show is how important promotion back to the Premier League is for a team that uh, under parachute payments are down, have big players, top players that they don't want to lose, that'll be on decent wages. I mean, Leeds United will have, if not the highest wage budget in the championship, and that can't last forever, right? So it shows how important, you know, to uh, that promotion back to the Premier League is in order to to get your finances back on track. You know, from a balance sheet standpoint, promotion is a must. Um, of course, if the club don't go up, um, there will be challenges. This is what Kieran had to say. Uh, but a lot comes down to how much the 49ers are willing to, you know, put up their cash and say, you know what, we'll just deal with that as and when, and we'll provide funding for the club to carry on as normal. Um, Kieran Maguire did say he doesn't see any PSR problems. <laughs> You know what I mean? No worries there. No profit, uh, profit and sustainability regulations. No court cases. No appeals. We are clean as a whistle in that respect, which is important. Um, a lot of that is due to the fact that we did sell players at a profit. Um, the likes of Calvin, etc. All them, all them um, players that we did move on uh, last summer, of course, were done so at a profit. Rafinha is one as well. Um, so what Kieran Maguire did say is the fans don't need to worry about a fire sale from the point of complying with PSR. Let's have a look at Leicester, for example. Sorry to use them as a barometer all the time, but they're in our league and they're under PSR regulations. They're not even allowed at this moment in time to re-sign players on contracts because of a transfer embargo. If they didn't go up, a lot of these players will then have to be sold as well to ensure that they comply with this season's PSR in the championship. Otherwise, they'll then be susceptible to points deductions, etc. So... At least from Leeds United's perspective, we won't need to be selling players at a cut down price in order to comply. You know, we've seen under the um, under the the previous regime of Risdale that we sold players at next to nothing in the end just to try and keep our head under the over the water. That's not going to be the case, of course. Listen, we're not daft. We know we'll end up selling players anyway. Um, the likes of some of the ain't staying another season in the championship, but we're doing it because they'll want to move on. Yeah, and they'll they'll demand to move on. We're not doing it because we're like, damn, we we need to get shock. Otherwise, we're going to be in trouble. Um, so what that does mean, obviously, if Leeds United don't go up and the 49ers are willing to say kick the can down the road uh, and maybe put up their own money, maybe that. That, that helps, um, but another way to obviously deal with another season in the championship is some players will be sold. You know, they, them players could be the financial make way if promotion is not attained, you know. Um, the likes of, as I've mentioned, Somerville, Rutter, etc. They will have many suitors and Leeds United will be able to sell them on. I mean, Somerville, I hate to have to say this because I don't like to look at Leeds United players as profits, 
Um, but that's the kind of world that we're in. Somerville is a massive profit, like because we paid not even a million for him. You know what I mean? Uh, someone like Rutter you might struggle with, but Somerville it's like, yeah, if we're if we're having to comply, he's going to help that massively. Now, what is alarming, if you like, um, from the previous regime, um, we still owe in the region of £73 million to other clubs in transfer instalments. Uh, that's up to the end of June 2024. Um, and then there is an additional £116 million in instalments due further down the line. It was very much the credit card approach with Andrea Radrazani, as we'll touch on in just a sec. Um, but the most recent set of accounts as well revealed that we earned £111.5 million in television revenue from being in the Premier League, of course, and the way they distribute the payments. Um, but naturally, when our accounts next year are published, that'll be massively reduced, regardless of how many times Sky put us on. It doesn't even touch what you earn from being in the Premier League and maybe not on you know, a fraction of the times we are um, this season. And that's just due to relegation to a lower division and the eyes not being on it as much as the Premier League. We all understand this, so, right? Um just on the topic of Leeds outstanding transfer instalments, um, which come approximately to around about 190 million in full, uh, this is what Kieran Maguire had to say to Joe at the YEP. I said, I think it explains the strategy of Leeds because we know Rad Razani was looking for an exit. Um, so the financing, if you like, wasn't coming from him. You know, he wasn't willing to put up his own money because he knew he was on. Why am I going to do that? Why am I going to pay X amounts? I'm on my way. It also explains for me. And finance experts watching this, so if there are any <laughs> that watch this, I doubt, I doubt it. But it also explains why Leeds United were willing to take reduced payments for someone like Rafinha as long as it was given almost instantly. Same with Calvin Phillips, you know, because he wanted that cash before he exited, right? And the numbers in the Premier League are shooting up. This isn't just affecting Leeds United or it's not just Leeds United that are taking this this style when it comes to paying for transfers because at the end of 2022 it was 1.8 billion odd in transfer installments um however the following year that had risen to 2.6 billion you know so it's insane the amount of transfer fees that are getting kicked down the road and that's a way for them to circumvent amortization all this sort of stuff they have top people being able to find their ways around and ways to kick the can down the road um Chelsea haven't even released their accounts as well, and, and like Kieran Maguire alludes to, he's expecting ludicrous numbers uh, from them. And Ultimately, clubs have found a loophole and have identified this as a way of keeping managers and fans happy, but not taking a big cash hit in the short term. But is that sustainable? I'm not too sure. Will that loophole be closed eventually? We've already seen with Chelsea the amortisation stuff that they can no longer amortise it over eight-year contracts. You can give them eight-year deals, you just can't amortise over eight years. Again, just coming back to the importance of getting promoted to the Premier League, ideally at the first time of asking, because what Kieran Maguire does say, um, that Leeds accounts do indicate some potential class cash flow issues in future. Um, but again, Maguire, Maguire did say that that could be mitigated by 49ers injection, which I think they'll do. They're here to make money, not lose money, all right? Um, and of course, as Maguire says, they certainly have the capacity to do that with the big players that are at the table with the 49ers. And um, I just want to say big props to them as well, because as a regime up to this point, they've been amazing. I was very scathing towards them and Parag, but the way they deal with the football club uh, from a media perspective, in and around it, it's just... It, it's a happy place for me as a fan seeing my club flourishing at the minute. Um, he does go on to say, Kieran Maguire, that the club may be forced to be more prudent um, with its financial practices if they wish to be, you know, if they wish to avoid being forced into selling their best players every season. Uh, he, he, he does add that while Leeds losses, and again that was um, thirty three point seven million, while they are they are not massive and comparable to those suffered by clubs who have already breached um, or are sailing close to the wind. Um, because if you look at it as a reasonably modest, we you know, Everton and loss, uh, Everton and Leicester lost 90 million, Spurs lost 90 million. So for Leeds to just lose 33, it's not bad, is it, really? It's mad what I'm saying that 33.7 million is okay, but in the, in, in the, the, the waters with which we were circling it, it ain't too bad. It ain't easy, but it ain't too bad. Um, he do he does add though 
you know, we, we have to caveat that, that there was some huge player sales which allowed them to get into that position. Rafinha, Calvin, all profit, basically. Um, and he does add, you can't do that season in, season out. It's not sustainable um, because ultimately you're not going to then be able to perform on the pitch if you constantly sell your better players um, unless you have an amazing production line. And Leeds United will hope to have that. But as a fan base as well, forget the finances off the pitch. We don't want to see our best players have to exit every single year just to comply with certain rules and regs, do we? Let's be totally honest. And he did, he does add that even Brighton are fighting that out now, you know, and they're poster boys for having a player development model. Um, every year, Alexis McAllister, Kai said, or players before that, it'll be Evan Ferguson next. But ultimately, that will have a shelf life. They can't continue to find gems. It's just not sustainable. You know, there will come a time where some of the players Brighton bring in don't bang like your Kai Sados, like your Alexis McAllister's, even the likes of Kukurea that they've made pure profit from. Eventually, that, that, that will come to an end, as it did with Leicester. Remember, the Leicester model. Your Mahrez's, your Kante's, your Harry Maguire's, and then now look at them. They're now in the championship. So, it, it, you know, it isn't sustainable. Kieran's, Kieran's bang on on that point. Now, on the whole, just to summarise, Leeds accounts displayed healthy commercial revenues, strong gate receipts, um, much of which will be unaffected by dropping into the championship. Leeds United still go in the numbers. You know, um, gate receipts are down just because we've dropped down. You know, we know that as a fan base, we still sell week in, week out. We're all still buying merch. Um, but he does say failure to promote back to the Premier League um, makes things more difficult because future sponsorship deals in on the table, are they? If you're not in the Premier League, um, he mentions charging Premier League prices is harder to justify, which is what we're paying at the minute. Um he also does say that the club are also liable to pay out uh, a fee of up to twenty-two million in bonuses should the club win promotion back to the top flight. But that'll be pocket change if we're being totally honest, because everything that comes with the Premier League, it, it's cool, it's calm. Um, another positive to add, just for the accounts next year, if you like, Tyler Adams and Louis Sinistera sales, um, both of which were in the region of twenty million. They'll go somewhere to alleviate in any immediate financial pressure, pressure or necessity to sell players. It'll be even better if we get into the Premier League, but even if we stay another year in the Championship, God forbid, that will still help alleviate that because that's quite it's 40 million there or thereabouts. Um, admittedly, them fees won't have been paid up front from the other clubs, as we already know. And we've, you know, 2.6 billion was owed last year in transfer fees further down the road for Premier League clubs. Bournemouth and. Um, Bor well, Bournemouth in both occasions with Sinny and Adams won't have paid us £40 million off the bat, will they? But what their fees will have done will be able to cover a, a massive chunk of the club's wage bill this year, um, which again, as I said right at the start, is one of the highest in the championship. Um, much lower than the £146 you know, million paying last year, but of course we had mandatory relegation wage reductions in players' contracts, which means it's reduced uh, quite astronomically. So all in all, in summary, the, the accounts are in a healthy position. Um, what I do want to do as well, just briefly, is touch on JKA. Phil Hay did an article this morning. Um, JKA, the saga is over. Leeds United have basically decided to pull their appeal. They're no longer going to pull, uh, they're no longer going to appeal about the money that they will have to pay out for uh, JKA. Look, it, it will go down as one of the worst signings, not just in Leeds United's history, but in football history, uh, if we're being totally honest. Um, just to go through the history of that, Leeds United had initially agreed to an obligation to purchase Augustine permanently for £18 million if they secured promotion to the Premier League. Uh, we did that, of course, um, but the COVID-19 pandemic hit, um, and that meant that the season ended later than it originally should have, July instead of May. Um, and therefore, the club felt that they didn't need to pay it due to these dates, which was absolute insanity at the time as well. Like, I never knew, thought it would fly, and it didn't. You know, FIFA... Um, refused and disputed that and ordered Leeds to pay a staggering twenty four point five million to Augustine um as we, you know, refused to fulfil our obligation to sign him. Um this'll go down as one of the worst, as I say, um there was a similar sort of situation at Chelsea, uh, Winston Bogard, 
Um, he earned 686,000 for his nine Premier League appearances over three years and 10 months. Um, not as high as that, but Augustine will have received half a million for every minute played in Leeds United, uh, in a Leeds United shirt. Half a million a minute. Insane. Uh, so we were going to appeal this decision, but, and have ultimately withdrawn uh, the decision. Um, you know, of course, that's going to cause financial implications, and I assume the club have done that knowing that it's not going to have a major impact on the finances, otherwise they maybe wouldn't have made that decision and let it roll for a little bit. Maybe they've waited till this year's accounts to be published to then go, now we're pulling it, so it'll go on to next year's accounts. There'll have been a lot of skullduggery going down, but ultimately Leeds United now won't, will, will have to pay him. You know, they will have to pay him. Um, I think, in all honesty, it could be close to around about £40 million all in when you think about the fine with Leipzig and all that sort of stuff. Um, but what it does is allows the club to draw a line under it now and, and move forward, you know, and bring that saga to a close. So I, as one, uh, as a fan, uh, are happy about that. Um, so the JK sa JKA saga is over and Leeds United's finances are in a good place. So, yeah, um, I hope that helps in explaining some of that. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Please do smash a like, uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. I'll see you tomorrow night anyway uh, for the um, for the Plymouth versus Leicester game. Of course, I'm going to miss the uh, presser because I'll be out with my partner, um, but I will pre-record uh, my preview for that game, so you'll have that instead. Anyway, thanks always for watching. I'll see you in a bit. Peace out. Leeds, Leeds, Leeds.